Your rank in CSGO on rating in CS2 isn't really a measure of your skill anymore. If you've been in the game for more than a minute, you'll know that to really grow and achieve anything significant, you need to be playing on Faceit, where your gameplay level is represented by your ELO. The path of every pro player goes through this platform. The first big milestone in your development is to hit level 10 on the Faceit. That's the initial goal every beginner and player aims for, regardless of whether you want to show off to your buddies or turn pro. But remember kids, CS is a team game where the outcome of a match depends on all 5 players. The foundation of a team play is individual performance of each player. For a team to have a shot at success, every member needs to be individually skilled. A player's game comprises shooting, understanding the game and movement. Most people only think about training the aim, that's just scratching the surface. Over time, players start to focus on a game, understanding, but even many who reach level 10 on face it, don't give much through the movement. The train is effectively, you first need to understand what movement is and what it entails. But before we dive in, don't forget to watch this video all the way through so you don't miss any crucial info that can help improve your gameplay and get you to the level 10 on face it. Also, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to the channel before we start. If you end up not liking the video, you can always take back your like, but for now, let's get going. Overall, movement in the game can be divided into two main components. First of all, is strafes and picks. What do I mean by that? Strafing is when a player moves left or right without turning their character. This movement is done using the A key to move left and the D key to move right. However, when shooting using a strafe in just one direction, the bullets won't initially fly straight to the center of your crosshair. That's where counter strafing comes in. It involves pressing the opposite movement key at the moment you need to stop. This way your bullet hits right in the center of your crosshair. You should use this technique to check corners and positions. Take for example coming out of the pit on Mirage. If you use a single wide strafe, there are many positions you need to check simultaneously, making an easy target. It's far more effective to exit and check each position one by one using strafes, pre-aiming at the spot you want to clear. This way you minimize your reaction time, making it harder for opponents to catch you off guard. To use strafes more effectively, you need to understand certain nuances of the game. For instance, picking an enemy with your right shoulder gives you an advantage because you'll see the enemy slightly sooner than they see you. Consider a situation on overpass where I pick an enemy with my right shoulder or an even surface and with good speed. From the enemy's perspective, they hardly stand a chance. It's important to always keep this feature in mind, however, this doesn't mean you can succeed when picking with your left shoulder. It simply gives you a bit more of an edge in taking down your opponent. The distance to the wall in front of you also plays a significant role. If you pick well close to the wall, the enemy will see you before you see them. This is how the game's perspective mechanics work. However, this feature has its advantages too, like the well-known centrist peak on a Ferrari peak. The key characteristic of such peaks is their speed. Even though the enemy may see you a fraction of a second sooner, reacting to such a quick peak is very challenging. It's important to remember that the advantage often lies with the picker. Utilizing this in duels against AVPs can increase the chances of making your opponents miss. The surface you're walking on and its angle also affect how you pick. Let's take mid on Mirage as an example. If you picked well on the inclined surface, it's easier for an enemy to take you down, even if you're picking with your right shoulder. Contrast this with being picked from the chair position. In the second scenario, it's much harder to take down your opponent due to the terrain's relief. The angle and elevation can significantly alter the dynamic of a peak, making it more or less challenging depending on the situation. The second component of a movement is your navigation around the map. With skillful movement, you can disrupt timing and occupy unexpected positions, making your gameplay more varied and unpredictable for your enemies. By map movement, I mean various types of jumps and solo boosts. Take for instance the Mirage map, where this aspect is prominently showcased. Imagine you're playing defense with an AVP at the window. It might seem that your only option is such a tight position, especially after throwing a smoke grenade into the window, is to wait for the smoke to clear. But no. By developing your movement, you have several action variations. Jumping into the ladder area, hopping onto short, dropping into underpass, or leaping into connector. All these movements need to be perfected, because any mistake makes you an easy target. However, once you reach a level when you execute these moves flawlessly as intended, you can easily secure one or two kills every round. 
and this doesn't apply to the window on Mirage, but also to other scenarios and positions on different maps. Consider a solo boost in a B-apps on Mirage. After securing your first kill, you can jump into the window for a surprise attack on another opponent who definitely won't be expecting you there. On overpass, a jump onto the flower bed on long can save you from an enemy sniper, or a jump onto the shelves in connector can help you occupy an unexpected angle. Continuing this list further might be redundant, as it could go on for quite a while. Covering all this would take a whole video or maybe half an hour or more. Another crucial element is the high jump. On some maps, there are boxes you can just hop on using the simple space and control method. Take for example the ninja box on an A-side in Mirage. You can't climb it using the conventional method, no matter how hard you try. To execute a high jump, you need first to press Ctrl and then space. But you don't need to crouch fully. The key is to start crouching just half a second before jumping. After all this information, it's logical to ask how to sharpen all these skills. It's actually quite straightforward. When it comes to strafes and peaks, there are two most effective ways to train them. The first is playing DM or deathmatch. All these techniques are essential for shooting. It's best to practice in real combat against actual moving people, whose movements are hard to predict. The second method, which I'd rather call a stage, is training per fire with bots. There are many maps available in Workshop that allow you to do this. This method is more effective in combination with the first, as it helps you to automate your movements in competitive matches, making it much easier to take down an enemy by knowing all the positions they could occupy. Regarding jump training, there are two methods and it's best to combine them. The first method involves Creed's climbing maps and servers. This mode is focused on challenging jumps. On such maps you can learn strafes effectively and overall get a better feel for your character's movements. They vary in difficulty to start with simple maps and progress to more complex ones as your skill improve. Then practice specific jumps on your own server that you'll need during games. The second way to develop your movement is b-hop or bunny hopping. Most of you might know what it is, but for beginners, bunny hopping is a movement technique that allows players to move faster than regular running. This is achieved by timing your jumps or hops to maintain and even increase your speed. It's an integral part of the game that helps dodge bullets in tricky situations. There are servers dedicated to this style of movement which focus on map complexion. They develop not just b-hop skills but also help you improve your sense of strafes. In B-Hop, you develop speed not through the forward W key, but through strafing left and right. Overall, this serves as a good warm-up before your games and also training for your movement. That's all the information you need about movement. By following these tips, you can become a master of movement, consistently surprising your opponents with unexpected moves and positions. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel so I can see your feedback. If this video gets 100 likes, I'll make a video how to train your shooting skills. That's all for today, see you in the next video, bye bye!